What's going on people? Welcome to United View and welcome to the Tactical View for the first time of the 2023-24 season. Eric Ten Hag has created a new master plan for Manchester United and in this show we'll be breaking down every little bit of it. He's taken a huge step towards enacting his philosophy this season after last season having to compromise quite a bit on his principles due partly to personnel and partly to the circumstances in which he found himself. Now, to start with, we've got to look at one of Eric Ten Hag's most famous quotes. He always loves talking about his rules and his principles in his press conferences, in his media with the club, in pretty much everything you hear Eric Ten Hag say. There's some reference to rules and principles, whether it's the players have followed it today, or sometimes the players didn't follow them, and that's why we've lost. So, what are the rules, what are the principles, and what does it actually mean? Well, to start with, I think there's a really important distinction to make between the two. There's rules, and there's principles. So we'll start with principles here. And principles really, what, what principles are, are sort of the, the general guiding ideas in which you play. So that will apply in a, whether you're playing a 2v2, a 3v3 in training, whether you're playing a 5v5 game, or whether you're playing all the way up to a full 11 on side pitch coming out at Old Trafford on a match day. So what we mean by that sort of situation is the idea is like when we've got the ball, we want to play out from the back. We want to be dynamic. We want to always play forward when we can, or we want to possibly stretch the width of the pitch. Those sort of guiding ideas are the principles. So it can be as something as simple as at all times, we want to be stretching the width of the pitch, or it can be something as complicated as we want to create numerical situations um, in certain areas of the pitch at certain times. So that's the principles, the general guiding ideas that Eric Ten Hag has. But on the other side here, we've got the rules, which is where it gets a little bit more specific. So the rules take these principles and they govern how we then carry that out onto the pitch. I think this season, what we've seen is that Ten Hag has adapted the rules to fit within his principles and he's gone a little bit closer to his true principles rather than the adaptations we've seen last season. So what I mean by that is that in pre-season so far, we have seen an incredibly clearly defined structure from the way Eric Ten Hag plays. But one of his key principles is that within that structure, there's lots of rotation, lots of fluidity, and that means players occupy different zones at all times. So what I mean by this is we, we come to the tactical board here. What we can see is when Eric Ten Hag's United have the ball, we pretty much always see this three at the back forming here. Sometimes it'll be Varane, Martinez and Luke Shaw, like we've got in this particular situation. In front of that, we tend to have a two, Casemiro and Dallo in this situation. And in front of that, we tend to have this front five situation going on here. So each of those three units, the, the back three, you've got the two in midfield, and then you've got the five at the front. They all have their own particular roles, but all of the organizations and ideas here are to fit within Ten Hag's rules and principles. So one of Ten Hag's key principles that we'll see in an act and adapted pretty much all season is that he wants to overload the last line of the opposition. So that means if the opposition are playing with a back four, then United want to create a front line of five. And the reason for that is that we want to make sure that each of those players individually in that back four have two players that they're having to deal with, meaning it's difficult for them to know when to go with one or when to go with the other. So for example here, if we've got the front five made up of um, Anthony and Garnacho holding the width either side, you've got Rashford through the middle, you've got Ma Mason Mount and Bruno Fernandes. What that means is that in this situation, Mount and Bruno Fernandes need to be close enough to influence the actions of that back four. So what it means is that in this particular situation, the right back here doesn't know whether he should mark Garnacho or stay inside on Mason Mount. Likewise, the centre back's overloaded because you've got Rashford one side, you've got Mount the other side. Same on the opposite side with Anthony against the opposite fullback and Bruno, um, and then Marcus Rashford in the centre. So that's one core principle that you'll see throughout the season here is that Eric Ten Hag wants to overload the last line of the opposition. Now, that's the principle. And in terms of the rules, what you'll see from Eric Ten Hag is that the rules can be a little bit more fluid and vary from game to game. So that in some games when the opposition do defend with the back four, we'll set up like this. In other games, in other situations, the opposition might defend with a back five, and United will look to push another player up the pitch to create that overload. Or it might be the case that the opposition defend with a back three, and so United have one player a little bit deeper on the pitch, because you only need four to overload the last line. Outside of that front five, what we tend to see is this back three here. And the reason that we tend to see a back three is that typically many teams at this, at this stage of um, tactical development in football, many teams tend to favour a 4-4-2 out of possession. And the reason for that is that Pretty much everybody knows their job because the 4-4-2 is really easy to understand and it also gives you pretty good coverage of the centre. You've got two centre backs, you've got two centre mids, you've got two strikers, so it's pretty strong in the centre of the pitch. And in the wide areas as well, you've got a fullback and a winger either side, so there's good coverage defensively pretty much all over the pitch. 
So the reason that Eric Ten Hag then wants his three is that you make sure, even against the front two, you've got enough players to work that ball around and they'll always be a free man. And the idea is that by having a free man here, you can afford to circulate the ball when you need to until such a time at which you can vertically make an incision into the opposition. And that is where you need players that can move the ball forward. That's where you need players that can be progressive and where the likes of Lissandro Martinez come into their own. Because in this situation, because it's always this back line here where the free man is found, it means that you won't have the overload in certain, areas, certain other areas of the pitch. So in particular in midfield, given that we've got an extra man here, it's 11 versus 11 in football. So if you've got an extra man somewhere, you don't have it somewhere else. So what that means is that in midfield, it's gonna be congested, it's gonna be tight. There's only gonna be time for one or two touches. So it is absolutely vital for Eric Ten Hag that the players in this back three are perfectly capable of when the time is right, circulating the ball. But when that moment crops up, when Mason Mount or Alejandro Garnacho or Marcus Rashford drop into a good position in a pocket, these players are able to move that ball forward, be incisive and create that transitional situation. What you will see constantly from United is the idea here of moving this ball, circulating at one speed, but as soon as that incision is made, the tempo changes immediately and that is what Ten Hag means when he says things like he wants a transitional team, he wants a team that can be um, exploiting space quickly and can be exciting and dynamic. So it sort of fits with the traditions of Manchester United. Now, back to the structure of Eric Ten Hag. Now, the reason that these sort of fixed structures became popular is because a lot of teams tended to defend zonally. So, for example, in this 4-4-2, every player has their own individual responsibility and their zone that they're going to end up marking. And what that tends to mean is that um, that's sort of born out of response to maybe in the early 2010s, teams starting to have their own structures. Now the problem that's sort of developed in recent years is that because teams are defending zonally, as well as having this positional idea of having different players in different zones, so Mason Mount in this particular zone of the pitch, Bruno in this particular zone of the pitch, what it's meaning is that because teams are defending in a certain way, they're able to go man for man. So this is where the genius of Eric Ten Hag really sets him apart from a lot of other managers in that because teams are trying to defend zonally and that allows them to go man to man if there's only one attacking player in any particular zone. What you want to be able to do is disorient that zonal approach. So what Eric Ten Hag likes to do rather than sort of within this set structure, the players occupying each of those roles is constantly changing. So what you might see is Diogo Delo or Rafael Varane receiving the ball in this particular situation. You might see Bruno pop up in this particular position to receive the ball it might not work that might not be on at that moment so what will then happen is Bruno will then make a run up the pitch get out of the way you might see Anthony come in here instead and you might see Diogo Delo go out wide instead and the idea there is because players are constantly interchanging it means that if defending players are constantly just thinking about which which players in their zone they're going to follow them everywhere all that's going to happen is this number six here that was following Bruno will now be pulled out onto the wing. Whoever was dealing with Diogo Delo, the, um, if this striker was screening the ball into him and delo has gone wide, the striker ends up here and you disorientate the block. So Ten Hag's ideas here have the advantage of both destroying a team that sets up in a structured way um, in terms of zonal marking, but it also disorients teams that decide that they'll go a little bit further and man mark defensively. So it gets the best of having the structure in terms of occupying the pitch well for positional play, but it also gets rid of the next blocker that's come in in terms of the team starting to defend man for man. So it gets the benefits to the best of both worlds. And what I want to illustrate now is an example of how Ten Hag uses rotations to disorient the press and what that means for the different players that he wants to have in his side. So this sequence here is taken from the Lons game. And what you can see at the start is, if it will let me select there, yep, there we go. So what you can see at this particular moment is it's a goal kick for United and you can see Andre Nani is on the ball. He's just made that pass to Luke Shaw. In terms of the way Lons are set up at this precise moment, they sort of played in a 3-4-3, but at this moment when they're pressing with the goal kick, it tended to be one sort of, the front three tended to be like a one-two. So one player behind two strikers. So what you can see at this moment is that because there's a front two here, United have got this back three shape formed, but because there's only two strikers in that front line, we don't need four players in that deep line. We don't need three sort of outfielders. We've got Anana and the two, um, you've got Anana, Varane, and you've got Luke Shaw here. That's enough players to outnumber the first line. So we don't need to bring someone else back. So what that means is Lissandro Martinez is pushed higher up the pitch. He's in a really nice space there. So keep an eye on this as the move develops. So you've got Martinez in a nice space there. And as we go to the second image now uh, in the sequence, what you can see is that as 
that ball is received by Luke Shaw there. You can see the striker's getting close to press. A nice little technical detail that you can see here is the striker's tried to sort of curve his run round, but Luke Shaw's actually letting the ball run across him. He's opened up to make the strike have to run an extra couple of yards to press. And those little details can give you that little bit more time to evade the press and find a pass forward. So that's quite nice. The other things going on in this situation are, you've got the um, midfielder here sort of still dealing with Casemiro in there, and you've got Martinez in space. But notice number 29 here. Number 29 in this situation is the Lons wing back. He's come all the way out from the touchline here to deal with Lissandro Martinez, who's the spare man in there. And because he's jumped all that way, that's going to leave a massive pocket of space or a massive area, a huge area of open space on this near side. So it's whether United can access that area of space. So what you can see, obviously, the important bits are that because there's no direct opponent for Luke Shaw in the wider areas because Lons are pressing with two strikers. Eric Ten Hag's decided to push Luke Shaw inside a little bit narrower. You've still got that front three against the Lons two strikers, but because you've got Lissandro Martinez in here, it disorients the pressing team. They wanted the easy option of Lissandro Martinez here, Luke Shaw out there, so that then the wing back has got a very simple job. You can just go and press. Um, Luke Shaw. But because Ten Hag switched them round, he's got a really clever idea here of, in this moment, for this particular game, of the way that they're pressing, the better option is Luke Shaw narrower and Lissandro Martinez in midfield, because it disorients what the Lons players are trying to do. And that's the key with Eric Ten Hag. You've got a particular structure, a particular idea, but the rules in terms of who goes where, and specifically how you carry that out, vary game to game based on the demands of the opposition. As we now roll this on to the third image, what we can see here is we can see Andre Nana receiving the ball. So Luke Shaw has opted to pass the ball back to Andre Nana. Um, and in this moment here, as Nana receives the ball, you can see the striker has decided to go and press Andre Nana. So that's the advantage of the numerical situation there that United had. We had three players against the Lons front two, meaning that because the Lons striker is opposite Varane there, this one's going to have to do some extra work in terms of dealing with Luke Shaw and also dealing with Nana. Now, because he's gone to press Nana. It's pretty clear what's going to happen next. You can see again, the wing back has come all the way in with Lissandro Martinez, leaving again that massive space out wide. And a couple of technical details here to note on Lissandro Martinez and why he's really well suited to this role is that you can see rather than just running straight forward in a line back there, as you might remember sort of Christian Eriksen in the first game last season against Brentford, he did something similar. He made a very straight run back there, received the ball, it sort of got stuck under his feet, he lost it, United conceded. Martinez in comparison, rather than just running straight, he sort of curved his run, he's arced it a little bit. And what that means is that because he's, as he's receiving that pass, there's a little bit less chance of it getting stuck under his feet because he's coming onto it at an angle. But it also makes it a little bit easier for him to check his shoulders and be aware of where the Lons player is. It also has the effect of increasing the distance that the Lons player's got to run because rather than receiving the ball here, he's receiving it in here. And as well, it makes that, that ball out to Luke Shaw that much easier because he's coming onto it at an angle as well. So it's that little, little technical detail there from Martinez of curving his run which makes everything else easier. So sometimes those details go a little bit underappreciated, but in this situation, that's one of the reasons why Ten Hag needs centre-backs that are so comfortable on the ball and so sort of fundamentally secure in possession. The technical basics are so good, they check their shoulders, able to receive on the half turn, and they do the simple things well in terms of receiving with the right angles to make the next job a little bit easier. So obviously it's pretty clear what's going to happen next in terms of that ball gets fired into Lissandro Martinez. And as you'd expect from Andre Nana, it's a very good pass, making Lissandro Martinez's next ball very easy out to Luke Shaw. So you can see, just to, hug, just to really drive the point home here, he's drawn in the wing back all the way here to the centre of the pitch. You've got this striker who's completely disoriented. This one, look at the body language of that guy. That, that guy on the far side, that striker, knows his press and his team's press has been destroyed by Ten Hag's structure. That is a frustrated striker there who's thought, hang on, why am I bothering? Why am I running? Because now I've got a 40-yard sprint back to make. This guy's a little bit sort of not really sure what to do, but what you can see is as Martinez receives the ball, he actually takes an extra touch to draw in the Lons player even further, then moves it out to Luke Shaw, who's got the whole pitch to gallop into. And when Eric Ten Hag says he wants to create transitional situations, he wants to be the best transition team in the world, what he doesn't mean is that he wants to constantly give the ball away so that United can win it back and then have space to counter into. What he means is that he wants to set his team up in such a way that he sucks the opposition onto us, 
to then create space behind, space in opposite channels in the wider areas to drive into. So when he says transitions here, he doesn't mean physically losing the ball every time. It means he wants to create situations where United can attack lots of space a lot of the time to play to the strengths of the players that he's got at United at the moment. So what is going to be really important for United when, this, when these situations are happening, um, when this constant sort of transitioning is going on, is that if United are starting really deep, it's going to be really, really important for that defensive unit, whether it's, uh, let's say it's a three in this particular moment, it's going to be vital that that defensive unit are able to get up the pitch quickly. And the reason for that is that what we'll see probably quite a lot is, I'll leave the defending team back there because say me dragging everyone up, up and down the pitch. But the idea here is that when United outplay the defending team, the whole team will all of a sudden, once we've made a few passes to draw the pressing team in, which will probably be in our own third. Once that's happened a few times, a few passes, few passes, at some point there'll be that opportunity to either drive or make a pass, an incisive vertical pass forward. Once that happens, it will be absolutely vital this season for United that the rest of the team sprint up the pitch and get there quickly. Because what's likely to happen is the United front five or the front three to start with Garnacho, Rashford and Anthony will be high up the pitch against that opposition back four. What you'll then see is Mason Mount and Bruno Fernandes getting up the pitch as quick as they can. That's why it's vital that the players in those areas are so mobile. That's why Mason, one of the reasons that Mason Mount is such a big upgrade on Christian Eriksen, because he's so mobile, so able to constantly be changing zones and getting up the pitch quickly on transition. But once that's happening, if this final ball goes wrong somewhere within this front five, and let's say, for example, Mason Mount's making this sort of run, but Garnacho just about telegraphs the pass, the centre-back steps out with it. If the rest of the team, the sort of back three um, and the two with one inverted fullback, possibly, or a centre-back in midfield, they, if they don't get out of the pitch quickly enough, United could be in a really dangerous situation of facing the opposition team in transition with loads of space in, to run into. So that is one big risk for United that I'm slightly worried about. Now... What I want to draw attention to is what I think for me is the perfect image to illustrate Eric Ten Hag's structure and his idea for this season. So this is taken from United's game against Arsenal. And what you can see in this moment is that 3-2-5 that we've talked about. So you can see, I think that's Bruno Fernandes there, um, Rafael Varane in the centre and Lissandro Martinez forming that back three. You can see you've got, I believe, Casemiro and Mason Mount there. And here you've got Anthony, you've got Juan Bissaka, You've got, I think that's Sancho, you've got Alejandro Garnacho, and you've got Luke Shaw coming onto it. So you can see that three, that two, and that five. This situation is exactly what United need to create, in that when Anthony's got the ball on the edge of the opposition box, that back three need to be, at the very least, on the halfway line, if not higher, depending on where the opposition strikers go. And what this means is that We've got all of Ten Hag's principles being enacted in one go. So you've got, you're overloading the opposition back line because we've got five against the four. So each of these players, so look, he's currently worried about wan Saka in there, but he's also got Sancho ghosting in behind him. You've got the same situation for the, opposition, the opposite side centre-back there with um, Garnacho there and Sancho. And obviously the fullback's dealing with Garnacho at the moment, but you've got Luke Shaw potentially running in behind. So you're overloading the opposition's back line. You're also making sure that because the back three are high up the pitch, these midfielders should probably be another 10 yards up the pitch and they're getting there as soon as they can. But what it means is that if the final ball goes wrong in this situation, when everyone is up the pitch, it means there's no big spaces, there's no large gaps between our players and the opposition players. We can counter press immediately, winning the ball back quickly and stopping any possible transition opportunities. So that that is one thing to watch for United this season, is how quickly can that back three and that midfield two get up the pitch to stop any possible transitions and make sure that we're dealing with those situations before they arise. Because obviously sometimes as well, if you do win the ball back after the opposition have just nicked it off you, sometimes they're thinking about attacking, you've got even more space to attack and that gives you a better chance the second time than you had the first time. The last thing I wanted to talk about in terms of Ten Hag's, Ten Hag's system, his structure, is the genius of it in terms of the fluidity. Now, we've talked about how it disorients the opposition's press, but what we haven't said yet is how it actually ends up suiting United's players better and how it lends itself really well to the demands of different games. So one thing we saw in the Arsenal game, obviously it didn't last too long, but we saw... Um, was it the Arsenal game where Kobe Mainu got injured? Anyway, whichever game it was, Kobe Mainu actually ended up dropping into this right back spot quite a lot because Aaron Wan Bissaka was playing on that particular day. Now, what that meant was that we ended up with Varane on this side, we ended up with Martinez on this side, 
and let's say Diogo Dallas Cobby may for now. What that means is that Wan Bissaka can get higher up the pitch, he can go and hold the width on this side, or he can go and play in these pockets. So the idea here is that because there's fluid, it's a fluid structure, but because there's set roles, so that's where the um, that's why we've got the rules there in terms of we want these positions occupied, but in terms of the flexibility, it doesn't matter who occupies these positions. So at times, if you've got Dallo, he's a little bit better on the ball in deep areas. He's a little bit more secure under pressure. So you'll see Dallo in these sorts of areas. He'll come deep and receive the ball. He'll tuck into midfield and be happy to receive the ball in the half turn. But sometimes when it's Wan-Bissaka, he's a little bit less comfortable doing that. So what he'll do instead is he'll go and stretch the width. He'll allow Anthony to tuck inside here. And you'll see wan -Bissaka on the wings there instead. Or you'll see wan -Bissaka higher up in the higher up the pitch, basically in areas where he's not going to have to receive the ball as often. So the idea with Ten Hag's, thing, Ten Hag's structure here is not just that it disorients the opposition, but it makes the best use of United players' talents by allowing them to occupy different areas of the pitch, different zones, based on their own individual abilities. I think one good example of a, a quote I really like here on this is Pep Guardiola said something to the effect of, I don't decide the system, the players do. And what he meant by that is that when he puts different players onto the pitch, the way they combine is different. The way they want to occupy the different positions is different. And that's exactly what Ten Hag is getting at here. If you put Diogo Dallo on versus wan Bissaka, you'll get something slightly different. If you put Marcus Rashford as a striker compared to Jadon Sancho, you'll get something different. So in some games when United are higher up the pitch and there's less space to run in, in behind, you might want Jadon Sancho in here because he's better at operating in the tight spaces between the opposition's defence and midfield. In other games when it's more open, the opposition are pressing higher, that's when you want Rashford, you want Garnacho, players that are exciting, can get into space and they've got the pace to threaten them behind. So. For me, the key points for Eric Ten, Hag's, Eric Ten Hag's master plan going into the 2023-24 season are number one, the fluidity he's got within a set structure. So that set structure, that 3-2-5, is something that you should look out for in pretty much every game. I think it's going to be a key point for United this season. The number two there is the fluidity within that structure in the different players occupying different roles all the time. Number three is going to be point to watch is how quickly can the back unit get up the pitch. Number four is how quickly can United outplay the press and bait the opposition press in by taking extra touches on the ball, starting really deep on goal kicks. So rather than maybe starting on the edge of the box, we've got the centre-backs all the way on their own line. And the other thing that I really like is Eric Ten Hag's genius rotation. So as, that, as we showed in that example, you've got Martinez stepping on, Shaw coming in here. Depending on the demands of the opposition, Sometimes it'll be Luke Shaw tucking in. But the fact that Ten Hag is so flexible allows United to have master plans for every single opponent that we come up against. So in many ways, tactically, this will be a really exciting season. I can't wait to see how it gets underway at Wolves. I hope you've enjoyed watching the show. Check back again very soon for the next Tactical View on United View.